Boker Tov, good morning everyone, right here in Rechavia Nachlaot in Yerushalayim and around the world, whatever time you'll hear this class. Welcome to the new subject of learning Tehillim according to Chassidut. It's an original subject, there isn't much uh, written about this and we put together, Baruch Hashem, an excellent course and we're going to try to do chapter by chapter as I'll explain to you soon. Before I begin... Before I begin, I want to remind everyone that tonight, Tuesday night, 7.30, right here on Zoom and on Facebook Live, we'll be continuing our course for Seriously Happy, uh, which we began in Tanya chapter 26, and we're in the middle of the course now on Tuesday evenings. So looking forward to seeing you there here, Bezrat Hashem, later on today. I would like to start with telling you a few basic facts about the Tehillim itself. Tehillim means praises. The Tehillim was written by David Amelech, King David, and that actually reminds me of the class that I gave towards the beginning of COVID called Dovid vs. COVID. Uh, you can find it on our, on our uh, YouTube channel. And thank you very much, Ryan Mordechai, for hosting this class and for organizing the YouTube channel so beautifully. And uh, you can find some interesting things of how the Tehillim is, can counter and hopefully t uh, get rid of the, the terrible virus of COVID-19. And so the Tehillim has 150 chapters. The Tehillim is divided into, in a number of ways. Firstly, each chapter is individual. Each chapter has its own introduction, which we will hopefully talk about as we do each chapter. Um, the, each chapter has pretty much its own subject, but it's individual from the it, it's it, it's uh, it's indivi it's an individual subject um, and not necessarily connected to the ones before or after. The Tehillim is divided into the thirty days of the month. So when we say the Tehillim every day after davening, we do the portion of Tehillim, and every month we finish the entire Tehillim. So for example, today is the 14th day of Tevet, and today's Tehillim begins in chapter Ayin Bet, 72, until and including Ayin Vav, 76. The Tehillim is also divided into the days of the week, which means that every week, if you do the entire if you do the entire day of the Tillim, you finish the entire Tillim, then you finish the entire Tillim within a week. So for example, today is Tuesday. So today's Tillim begins from Nun Allah 51 and concludes on Ayin Bet uh, 72. Now it's interesting to note that in Chabad, we see by the Rebbe's that they tried, if there was a time of, of need, a time of, of, uh, of sorrow, um, an, an, an extra, they needed ha to have an extra tefillah, they would do the day of the week in addition to the day of the month. So for example, the Alter Rebbe, when he came out of uh, prison, that day was a Tuesday, the 19th day of Kislev, and the Alter Rebbe said the Tehillim from 51 to 72, and he writes in his letter that he wrote soon after he was released from, from prison, Kishiyatzati b'shalom, when I went out in peace, I said, Pada b'shalom nafshi, the famous Hasidic Chabad song, Pada V'Shalom. Pada V'Shalom Nafshi, that Hashem, like David the Melech said, Hashem has redeemed my soul, B'Shalom, with peace, in, in Shalom. In addition to that, the Tehillim is also divided into the five books uh, from, what, from the beginning to the end of Tehillim, similar to the five books of Moshe, Chamisha Chum Shitora, which, as we'll see soon, is very much connected to Torah Shebikhtav, the written Torah. Okay, now Tehillim means praise. As David the Melech says himself in chapter 22, the Atak Kadosh, and you, Almighty God, are holy. Yoshev, you sit, quote unquote, um, you, you, uh, you experience Tehillot Yisrael, the praises of Am Yisrael. We praise Hashem through the fact that we say the words of Tehillim. Now, there's an interesting story which is recited, which the Rebbe quotes about the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov, before, especially before he, he, um, he was revealed as the Rebbe and the founder of, Hasid, of the Hasidic movement, the Baal Shem Tov 
the Baal Shem Tov, um, even after he became Rebbe, he would go around from town to town and to talk to people about the greatness of Hashem. Okay, so the Baal Shem Tov came to a little town and he saw an individual, a great Torah scholar, sitting in the back, uh, in the back of the shul. There was like a little, a little sub room and he was called a parosh. Parosh literally means separated. He was almost like separated from the experiences of this world. And he, he, sir, he sat and learned Torah literally day and night, barely ate anything. And he was for over 50 years, five zero. He sat and learned Torah and didn't know anything of this world but learning Torah. And there were many of these Purushim, especially back then. And very often, they were so engrossed, they were so immersed in their Torah learning that they did not really pay much attention to anything around them. So the Baal Shem Tov went over to this parush, this great Torah giant, and he said, Shalom Rabbi, how are you doing? How is your health? How is everything doing? And of course, the parush was so engrossed in his learning, he didn't realize what the Baal Shem Tov said, or he made as if he didn't realize. And so once again, the Baal Shem Tov, the Baal Shem Tov perhaps ta tapped him on the shoulder and said, my dear rabbi, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And again, and again. And this parush did not respond to the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov was dressed at the time in regular peasant clothes. He traveled around, usually didn't want people to know who he was. And so he didn't even look up to see on the, uh, behind his shoulder who was standing there. And so the Baal, until he became frustrated, the parush, and the parush, he, he didn't respond, but he, you're able to tell from his body language that he was very uncomfortable, as if to say, what are you doing? What are you talking to me about? I'm in the middle of learning. I'm such a great tzaddik. I've been learning for over 50 years straight, barely eating every day. And you're coming along and you're disturbing me? And what are you disturbing me with? You're disturbing me with, with uh, little petty questions as if, how I'm feeling and how I'm doing, as if that's important while I'm learning Torah, I'm learning Gemara, Talmud. And the Baal Shem Tov, as if to read his thoughts, the Baal Shem Tov smiled and said as follows, David HaMelech, King David, says in the Tehillim, in the verse that I quoted earlier, the Atak Kadosh, you Almighty are holy, separated, you are exalted, Yoshev Tehillot Yisrael, you appreciate the praises of Am Yisrael. That's the simple meaning. But on a deeper level, you and I, human beings, how do we survive? We survive thanks to Hashem's Parnasa. Hashem gives us livelihood and sustenance. How does Hashem, quote unquote, what gives Him His sustenance? What gives Hashem His Parnasa, quote unquote? The fact that we say to him. That's one of the things that made the, the parush really upset. The Baal Shem Tov asked him, why aren't you giving Hashem his parnasa? Hashem? Parnasa? Well, if you look at the word Yoshev, Yoshev means to sit. Hashem doesn't have a body or any bodily features. But nevertheless, Hashem, the Almighty God, he sits. What happens when a person sits? Lahavdil. A person sits when a person is standing, a person is tall. Then when you sit, you're lowered. When Hashem Almighty, quote-unquote, sits, in other words, He lowers Himself, quote-unquote, He wants to be related to us, He wants to be connected to us, and He, quote-unquote, lowers Him, He descends to the world, and we want Hashem to come to the world. We want to be more connected to Hashem in a more, in a more obvious way. How do we do Yoshev? How do we, how do we bring about the Hashem, the Atakadosh, you Almighty, the Holy One, blessed be He, Yoshev, we want you to come down and to be connected to us, to be more revealed to us. Tehilot Yisrael, said the Baal Shem Tov. That's through Tehilot, the praises of Am Yisrael. When we say the Tehillim and we praise Hashem, 
that bring that gives Hashem his quote unquote parnasa. Obviously, Hashem can do perfectly fine without us. Hashem is always was, is, and will always be, regardless if anyone knows that he's around or anyone does anything to quote unquote uh, and give him more more pleasure. But Hashem, in his infinite knowledge, has chosen that when we say the Tehillim, yes, you and I, when we say the Tehillim, we bring Hashem the quote-unquote Parnasa. Hashem has pleasure from hearing the praises that King David, the David Melech, recited, these holy words that David Melech recited to Hashem. And it's important for us to remember that the words of the Tehillim are holy. These are part of Torah Shebikhtav, the, the, the written Torah. Every word is holy. In fact, the Tzemach Tzedek said, the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Chabad Rabbi, Rabbi Menachem Mendel, he said, he said as follows, if we would know how important every word of Tehillim is, we would simply sit and say Tehillim day in and day out. And so the words themselves are holy. Very often, we don't necessarily refer to the Tehillim as far as the explanation and the understanding of the Tehillim. Rather, the sanctity of the words and the letters that David the Melech recited in the Tehillim. That's why on the Shabbos before Rosh Chodesh, which is called Shabbos Mavarachim, the Shabbos that we bless, right before Musaf, we do the special blessing of the new month, the Shabbos before the new month. And so we, we recite the entire Tehillim Shabbos morning, even before the davening. And the Rebbe writes in the Hayom Yom that when we do that, it is a special uh, merit for generations to come, for Bane Chayo Mezoni Reviche, for children and for Parnasa, uh, for livelihood, and for, and, uh, and for life, for health, in a very broad way. So it's very important to say the Tehillim very often. And if you're just sitting around at home and you have nothing much to do, take the Tehillim and, and, and say a chapter of Tehillim. Try to say it in Hebrew, then read the explanation, the English translation. And hopefully you have a book of Tehillim uh, at your home. So every day we'll be able to, to learn together the words of the Tehillim, the Hebrew words and the translation, and hopefully very deep meaning of Tehillim based on the teachings of Hasidut. Rabbi? Yes. Uh, so you had said that the Tehillim is, uh, was composed of different parts of, like holy words, different parts of the Torah and the... Or Correct. How, wh yes? Correct. Okay. So when we're saying Tehillim, it's like, where, is that would be like uh, where it says, uh, bringing a Dira Bitaktonim, like bringing Hashem's... Uh, that's an, yes, that's yes? an excellent question. In a couple of minutes, I'm going to expand on the fact that Tehillim is part of the Torah, part of the written Torah, and how we balance this with learning the interpretation of the Tehillim. But there's no question, it's a great question, that when we recite the Tehillim, we are fulfilling a mitzvah of learning Torah, and by learning Torah and saying holy words, we are literally making a, a, an edifice for Hashem uh, right here in this world in the most revealed sense of the word, which is very special. Yeshakoach. In fact, I want to tell you a story right in back of the Chabad Tehillim. By the way, first I want to mention um, that, uh, that we have um, the Tehillim, the Chabad Tehillim is called Tehillim Ohel Yosef Yitzchak. And it seems to be clear that the Rebbe was the first one who printed this Tehillim, having the name of his father-in-law. And it seems to be an extra special merit when a person says Tehillim from the Chabad Tehillim because the, the Rebbe writes in the beginning of the Tehillim that it's a special zechut for whatever you need. That's on a, a side note. Now, in the back of the Tehillim, the Rebbe put together uh, a, um, a, a little booklet. It's mainly in Yiddish, but today it's been translated into Hebrew and I believe also into English. Interesting stories, and I'll share with you just one story which is quoted over there in the back of, in the, back of the Tehillim. Once the Baal Shem Tov, he used to have um, the, the meal, two meals together with the Chavraya Kadisha, together with a holy student of, the Baal, of, his, of, 
of his. And once to, one, one of the meals of Shabbos, I believe it was the, the, the Shabbos by day, the Baal Shem Tov would eat it together with the simple people. As it's known that the Baal Shem Tov used to be mekarev, he used to bring close, even the simple folk, and even though they weren't Torah scholars per se, nevertheless, the Baal Shem Tov would, would, um, would, would be mekar of them, and he ate a special meal every Shabbos morning with them. And the Baal Shem Tov, when it came to uh, Sudash Lishit, the third meal, and uh, he ate with, the Baal Shem Tov ate the meal with the Chavraya Kedisha, with his holy students, he felt, and he saw with Ruach HaKodesh, with a divine inspiration, that there were some of the students which had this thought, and they thought to themselves, why in the world is our Rebbe bringing, uh, he, he's not only uh, going around to the little towns and talking to the simple people, but he's actually one of the meals of Shabbos. He's eating together with them. What's so important, what's so great about the simple people? And at that time, the Baal Shem Tov put his right hand on the student sitting next to him, and his left hand on the student sitting to his left. And he asked everybody to connect and to put, to put their hands um, one on each other's shoulders. And he asked them to close their eyes. And all of a sudden, they were in some kind of, um, uh, they, 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 they flew away and they all saw simultaneously something very, very, very moving. They saw that there, were, that there was the, 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 simple, um, the, the simple farmers and the simple people that were saying the Tehillim, and they closed their eyes, and they said, uh, for example, Sama nafshi lelokim, my soul thirsts for you. Ad matai, until when will there be this galut? And they were quoting different verses from the Tehillim. And they were so uh, immersed, and they were so inspired from the words of the Tehillim, that they were crying that even the students of the Baal Shem Tov started to cry. When they saw this image, almost like a video uh, 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 capture of, of them saying the Tehillim, that totally overcame them, and that totally made them uh, understand that when the Baal Shem Tov, he, the Baal Shem Tov didn't even have to explain the mere fact that they saw that these simple people are so sincere, and they have such a beautiful neshama, that they're crying out, even if they didn't necessarily understand what they were saying. Maybe they couldn't even read Hebrew, but they heard Tehillim, maybe that someone else said, and that inspired them to say the same words. And even while they were working or while they were doing their mundane things, they would say, re recite words of Tehillim. That put things in, in, into perspective. That these holy words of Tehillim were able to inspire so many people, so many Jews throughout our rich history. Now, one of the reasons why I decided to, to, to start this course, which today I'm only starting the introduction to the course, but one of the reasons why is because just recently on Yutet Kislev, the Chaga Geula of the Alter Rebbe, we made a seal for the Tanya. Actually, you can see it on, the, on our YouTube channel, one of our 200 and, uh, almost 270 videos that we have posted on our YouTube channel, Chabad of Rechavia, we have a special seal that we made on Yutet Kislev, uh, or perhaps it was the day before, for the entire uh, Tanya. It was actually, I'm remembering now, it was on a Friday, so it was one of the Kabbalah cafes that we did. And over there, the Alter Rebbe writes the importance of saying every Shabbos, Kuf Yud Tet, uh, Psalm number 119. And um, the Alter Rebbe says over there, that's one of the reasons why we're going to start with chapter 119. Not today, but hopefully tomorrow. So when you have your Tehillim, you can start preparing, put your bookmarks to Kuf Yud Tet 119. One of, the reasons, one of the obvious reasons is because this is the Rebbe's chapter when it comes to um, saying Tehillim. Every person has a chapter of Tehillim which is connected to, the, to your age. And we're supposed to say the Tehillim while we say the daily Tehillim, you're supposed to say your own chapter of Tehillim. So for example, if you're 20 years old, because most people like to say that they're 20, um, so you say chapter 21. Why? Because when you, when you celebrate your 20th birthday, you are entering into your 21st year. So when you're born, you enter into your first year, you say chapter, or your parents say chapter Aleph. It's a good thing to say also for your children. 
And when you're 20, you say chapter 21. When you celebrate your 21st birthday, you start saying chapter 22. And there's a very beautiful story that the previous Rebbe told over that when, when the, the, his father, the Rebbe Rashab, he uh, passed away, unfortunately, when he was 60 years old. And on his 65th birthday, he came to his son, the previous Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, in a dream. And a, a dream of a tzaddik is not just a, a plain dream. It's, it's, an, it's a spiritual experience. And the Rebbe Rashab said a mimer, a Hasidic discourse, on, I believe it was chapter 66. In other words, for his 65th birthday, he said a chapter for, uh, he said a, a mimer for the cu- upcoming, for the new chapter. And so therefore, it's important for us to say the Rebbe's capital as well. And by divine providence, now we're saying chapter Kuf Yud Tet, chapter 119, every day. It's the longest chapter that there is. There are 176 uh, verses. It's actually divided into two when it comes to the daily telim for the 25th of the month and the 26th of the month. And in any case, it's important, something very special that each and every one of us can take upon ourselves now as we start this special course in Tehillim according to Chassidut. Now, the Alter Rebbe, in the final chapter of Tanya, he says something very interesting. He says two things which, are, which seem to be connected. He says, on one hand, he says that we should take on a tractate of Talmud to learn, and Chassidim uh, traditionally take upon ourselves a tractate of Talmud to start from Yutet Kislev of, of this year, and to finish it by the next Yutet Kislev. So, and when every person takes on a, 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 a tractate, then after the year, we all finish the entire Talmud together. We try to do, every community tries to take on a, a tractate of, of Talmud. And then he says the idea and that we should, we should um, almost in the same breath, he says that we should finish every week. So it wasn't every Shabbos, every week we should finish the, the uh, chapter Kufiyu Tetna What's the connection between learning Talmud and saying, and saying uh, a psalm, saying Tehillim? In fact, they seem to be quite different focuses. Tehillim is part of Torah Shabbat, part of the written Torah. And Talmud is part of the oral Torah, Torah Shabal Peh. Tehillim, when you say Tehillim, you fulfill the mitzvah of learning Torah, even if you don't understand what you're saying. That's the, that's the halacha, that you have to say the bracha before learning Torah. Baruch Hashem Hashem we say every morning, Asher bachar banu mikol ha'amim, v'natan lanu et Torato, Baruch Ata Hashem, notena Torah. We bless Hashem for choosing us and being the chosen nation. And we thank Hashem. No, thank you for giving us the Torah today. And then you can learn Torah. You're, when you say that bracha and then you say Torah Shabbat, you learn the, the you read the, 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 the written Torah, you fulfill the mitzvah. Of course, it's better to understand what you're saying. But even if someone got an aliyah, for example, and you don't understand what the Baal Korah is reading from the Torah, it doesn't matter. Your bracha, your blessing on the Torah was not in vain. Because when it comes to Torah Shabbat, when it comes to the written Torah, the letters, the words are sacred. Even if we don't understand what we're saying, the fact itself that we read them, that itself is, 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 is very, very precious and we're, we're fulfilling the mitzvah. As opposed to Torah Shabbat, the oral Torah, Mishnah, Talmud, all the interpretations, Halacha, Shulchan Aruch, Court of Jewish Law, if you say the bracha and you read a, a paragraph of the Shulchan Aruch and you don't understand what you're saying, you have to make sure you understand it because if you don't, then you have not fulfilled the mitzvah and the bracha might be in vain. So it's almost like the Alter Rebbe is discussing two, two different subjects, the, Torah, the written Torah, which you don't even have to understand what you're saying, and the oral Torah in one breath. That's how he finishes the last, in the last chapter of the Tanya right at the end. So what's the explanation? The explanation is as follows, as explained by the Rebbe and the previous Rebbe. We have a concept of Chakam, but we have Chachma and Bina. Chachma is wisdom, Bina is understanding. In, very, in, a, in, a, in a very short nutshell, in, in a nutshell, what is the difference between wisdom and understanding? Wisdom is the concept, a flash, even if you don't expand on, upon it. The the Bina, the understanding, is elaboration. Now, e- here's the point. Each one without the other is not good. 
you need to have this bond of Chochmah and Bina. Wisdom and understanding. Why? Because if you have only the Chochmah, you, you might never be able to understand properly if you don't break it down into details, into the Bina. And if you only have the Bina, only have the elaboration, without the chachma, then you might go off the deep end. You might elaborate way too much, get off the focus. You need to, have, you need to keep the focus the entire time. You need to have the chakam, the chachma, it, within the bina the entire time. So basically, you need to have this bond, this relationship between the chachma and the bina. Now, if we're going to take these two parts of the Torah, which are one Torah, just two parts, you have the written Torah and the oral Torah. The written Torah is like the chachma, the wisdom, the concept itself. Each letter, each word is sacred. But then you need to have the bina. You need to have the Torah Shabal Peh, the oral Torah, to expand upon it and to explain it. If you just take, for example, the verse of the Shema, and we say, that you should tie them on your hand, and you should put them as totafot between your eyes. You have no idea what we're talking about, that we're talking about tefillin, how to make tefillin, how to write tefillin, that it means the portions, where to put them exactly. There, you don't, almost don't know anything. You have to have the, the healthy relationship between the written Torah and the oral Torah. Therefore, even within the oral Torah, you need to have verses of the written Torah because that's going to keep the Torah Shabal Pet in line, so to speak. And, you, and within the written Torah, you need to have explanations. So that's a healthy relationship between the Tehillim and the Talmud. The Tehillim is a classical example of Torah, which people say, people read it even, with it, even if they don't understand it, which is 100% fine. It's perfectly fine, and it's a good thing to, to say to him and to read to him um, just, just for no reason, especially if someone has a, a, a loved one that needs to have a refua shalema, a complete recovery, or, or, or Yeshua uh, salvation in any area. Tehillim is a great thing, and it brings parnasa. It's great for everything. But, and there are some chapters which are good for certain purposes. Nevertheless, even if we don't understand what we're saying, it's okay. Torah Shabbat Peh, Talmud, is full of, of logic, full of intellect. But unfortunately, it's possible, as there are some stories of people who unfortunately uh, rebelled against, against Yiddishkeit, but they loved the intellect and the, the logic of the Talmud. It's fascinating. The Talmud is absolutely amazing. And so they, they, could, they could sit and read the Talmud um, and w- without, without elaborating too much, they could sit and learn the Talmud and, and, and to, and to uh, in, in the wrong setting. For example, on Yom Kippur, eating, but reading the Talmud, because the Talmud is as if it's not holy. No, the Talmud is holy. And we need to keep the, uh, we, we need, we need to keep the, the sanctity of the Torah even within the elaborations of all the explanations. Therefore, vice versa, also in the Tehillim, the Tehillim also sometimes need to, needs to be explained. Even if you don't understand, it's okay. But the purpose of our course is, Bezrat Hashem, to be able to give meaning and lots of neshama, lots of soul and understanding and inspiration into the Tehillim that we say so often. And so having said that, I would like to wish uh, all of you, the Bezrat Hashem, we should be able to get together very often to learn about Tehillim and other subjects. Um, in the meantime, you can look up many of our classes on our YouTube channel. Uh, just type in Chabad Avrachavia, subscribe, and then you'll be able to, to we, we have Baruch Hashem uh, around 100 subscribers already, which is excellent. And uh, we're looking forward to, add, to adding many more classes of our Tehillim equals Chassidut um, into our learning. And Bezrat Hashem, hopefully tomorrow, we're going to start with Kuf Yutet, chapter 119. I'm looking forward to seeing you tonight at 7.30, right here, learning um, the Tanya, seriously happy, our course, continuing our course. And uh, then tomorrow morning and every morning, 9.30 to 10, right here at Tehillim. And of course, Friday mornings, Kabbalah Cafe, right here on Zoom and Facebook Live. Shalom, shalom, have a great day. This was awesome.